Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. This little gem here, I know a lot of you folks have spied it in the background in the last, uh, I don't know, two or three videos and ask about it. And I did, you know, I just admitted that it was here. Uh, but this is actually from a man in Canada that brought it down to me. And we're going to uh, take a peek at it. It's got kind of a, a problem that uh, we've seen in the not too distant past. It's a uh, it's very similar problem to the HS1 that we're just now kind of finishing up or at least getting the engine back together. But it sounds like it's got the same problem. So uh, what I'll do here is I'll get you handheld We'll just take a look at it, and it's just a, as cute as a bug in a rug. I haven't had a mini bike in here uh, in ages, and it's just uh, it, it's really a unique part of the history of the Enduros and stuff that most of us uh, uh, is close to our hearts. And you know, you can't, you just can't leave the kids out, so. This is where a lot of us start, and it's also uh, where we start our kids. So let's take a look at this thing. It's a really nice example. Uh, most of these things really got beat up bad. You know, it it's definitely shows some wear, some little dents. But the real problem was caused by water, <laughs> we think. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna check some stuff. We're gonna check for spark. We're gonna check, uh, uh, we're gonna pull the side cover off and actually check what we think is wrong is if I remember him correctly saying that it either it either had a carburetor off or it had the uh, plug out or something and somehow or another water got in the bottom and he didn't realize it and he went ahead I believe and put a top end in it we'll we'll get there so we'll know uh, I just, I'm sorry, I can't remember all of the details, but anyway, he put a new top in in it and it didn't fix the problem or it didn't fix the whole problem. So that's what we're going to do. So let me, uh, let me get you down here. I'm going to try to get my microphone next to the engine so you can hear what's going on. Okay, I'm going to. I'm going to place my microphone down here. Well, let's see, just a bolt on the side cover there to see if we can hear what's going on. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? I'm hoping you can hear that. It sounds like lower end bearings. Uh, I believe he's got me all the bearings and a rod kit and all that stuff. So that's kind of where we're going on this. I believe this is a 76. And it's in really good shape. Uh, he did, I think he said he put uh, a seat cover on it and new tires. And of course, uh, the top end. It really does seem like it has very good compression. So that shouldn't be an issue. You know, it should just be what we find. So that's kind of the plan today was to just kind of introduce you to this bike. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and start tearing it apart and getting the engine out. But before we do that, we're gonna pull the side case off we're going to check for spark 
and we're going to look in here a little closer and see if uh, there's anything else that it could be. Okay, one other thing that we want to address on this is it has a small leak. You can see, I believe, down here where it's been leaking on the table. Uh, I think it's coming from the, the drain plug, but I'm not positive. It kind of looks like, because it leaks most of the time when it's on its side, you know, on the side stand. And get, I get some oil there, but that being said, there's oil up here too. So, and you can see some here on the bolt coming out of here. Of course, this all might, might be migration from, from the, uh, the drain plug. And it also kind of comes off back. Yeah, back here where the, uh, well, you know, I'm, I was gonna say the side stand, but let's see here. The thing is, is it, uh, it's a clear oil, and I, I see it here also, but this is your injector oil, and it's, you know, it kind of looks clear on my fingers, but it's green in the tank. So we're gonna look into this as we, as we take it apart and see if we can figure out where that leak's coming from too. But before we do that, let's go ahead and pull the plug and let's see if it's got spark. Okay, I've got the spark plug out here. And we just need to know that if we're, you know, if we need to look for other issues while we're going in, you know, if we go into this thing, I'm pretty satisfied we will, but we, uh, we just need to know whether or not the ignition is working. And so we, while we're in there, we can take a look, a look at it. Okay, I go to the first step on the switch. Well, I'm not seeing anything. Let's see here. Let's turn it over to the next switch or position to the right. Oh, there we go. I'm getting it, I don't know if you are or not. But that's, that's uh, this is a one, two, three position switch. I'm all the way to the left now. See, I've still got spark. Then I go to the center, which you would think would be daylight running. No spark. You go to the next one to the right, and again we have spark. I've never seen a, a switch on a bike work like that. I don't think. Okay, just so you know what I'm talking about, I would think this would be off, but yet we're getting spark there. When we go to the center, no spark. When we go to the right, we have spark. So this is, uh, I guess it's a off center position switch. And I assume that the, this is daytime running. That's nighttime running maybe, I'm not sure. It's kind of strange. I wonder if anybody out there has got a a manual that, uh, or know if this is correct on that switch. 
put it in the comments if you uh, if you'd like. It is 576 miles on this little booger. Okay, let's go ahead and get this uh, side cover off. Mm. Actually got some Allen screws on this. This is a little newer, although the rest the rest of the screws look to be Phillips. I guess they just had to do it a little at a time. I've had a lot of people ask me why I use these Phillips screws. And it's just because that that was the original uh, concept. I mean that's what they used. Uh, I do I much prefer the Allen head screws you bet but they really didn't start using them much until later uh, I, I think the the big bikes the uh, 250 360 used them maybe in 72 started then Go a little further. Let me get my impact and we'll get these this other case off. Yeah. I wish you could feel what I'm feeling in the flywheel here. It's really rough. I was hoping to report that it wasn't this way, but it is, and I can feel it too. Let's get the uh, dial indicator set up and let's check this. Okay, I've got this set up here. You got to be careful because uh, the bike will move if you get too rough with it. And that's three or four thousandths like that. And that's, yeah. Let me get the microphone up here. And see if you can hear this. Put it on the end of the flywheel here. If you look closely, right here, it's a lot of movement in the bearing. We've got a lot of in and out too. Let me get the the dial indicator set up for um, in and out here. This is real hard to do because I end up pulling the bike one way or the other. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's that's not a real good indicator. Okay, I've got the microphone up here again. I'm just going to wiggle it back and forth. A lot of movement there too. That's definitely our problem. The other side might be okay because it uh, well, I'm no, I don't know how this engine is built. We, we won't know until we get over there, but I'm assuming that the other is just like the, the other uh, Enduros, where it runs in, in the fuel mix too. Boy, a lot of noise in there. Well, we know what we got to do, guys. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get in there with that little spanner or not. There. Got one, one little turn of it. There we go. All right, now I can get it by hand. do have a lot of a lot of oil on the bottom of this thing I think you can I wonder if it's leaking that's pretty cool where they put the air cleaner inside the oil tank this is what I'm after right there this wire was all back here behind the battery and then it comes up here so that's what I'm after to get the the wiring loose there so now I can put the tank back I think now we just verify real quick that uh, see we've got we got green and green yellow and yellow black and black but here we've got a uh, green with a red stripe going to a green with a red stripe I can only assume that's right so that's how we'll put it back together unless we have other issues okay we're gonna have to disconnect this just to make things a little easier so we'll try to minimize the leaking there. Okay. And boy, that's a small air cleaner. Let's see what's in there. <laughs> that is pretty tiny. Tiny and cute, just like the rest of this thing. Okay, I think we to the point where we probably need to get the muffler off, so let's get around there and do that. Looks like we've got a bolt right here. The battery's already disconnected. He didn't have that in the works, so we've got this one. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be the what gets it off of there I'm gonna have to go around the other side 
Okay, just kind of hold on to this while we finish that bolt off. I'll leave the stinger on that. Kind of flat right there. Not what you'd call performance oriented. Okay, apparently we've got uh, these are captive bolts. Should only be the nuts that come off. You ever have those that you think they're loose and you probably should have just kept going with the impact. Okay, okay so I'll get this uh, clamp loose. Well, that feels really nice and pliable. I think maybe that at some point they kind of changed the material they were using. Help things get a little, be a little better anyway. There we go. Maybe I should get those clamps off first. Well, that's, well, that, it's a heavy duty clamp, but it's not clamping much. I think it's just a little too big. Yeah. Those, those aren't going to work good for that. Probably automotive clamps. So, yeah, we should be able to get this. Looks like about like the one on the HS190 twin. All right, let's get our oil pump cable disconnected. Looks straightforward, just like all of them are. I'm just not well versed on the later model ones, but you know, when they have a design that works, you know, why, uh, why change it? I get it, I really do. Uh, that's got to be removed from the engine there. Just like all of them do. Okay. So it looks like we're down to the uh, engine bolts. We'll start with what, what I think is going to be the hardest one first. And actually it uh, came right loose.
Okay. That should be it. There we go. Except I'm hung up here. Thought I had everything loose. Isn't that a cute little thing? Okay guys, I'm going to set it up here on my bench. I always get questions with about this uh, jig when I use it. I just always set it up first. I got a lot of extra bolt here I don't need, so I got a bunch of stuff sticking out here. But it's not going anywhere. And you can just adjust these to get it to kind of hang where you want it. We'll do that when we get it on. It's a OTC. That's the company, OTC. I think it stands for Ottawa Tool Company. It's a subsidiary of Ford, 7020. And I've used it for years for uh, doing rear ends on cars. You know, the removable, removable differential or carriers. You pull it out, you, I've mounted automatic transmissions in it and hang them from the bench, work through the top. You know, it's, it really is handy, but all of mine I've bought used, and they're pretty expensive. And I've had them for many years. It's, uh, I don't know why they're so proud of them, but they are. Once you get that work kind of where you want it, I think that's what I want. Then you can go ahead and tighten these outside bolts. And that way you've kind of got it where you can work on it. And it does, uh, if you've been watching any time at all, you can lift this up and you can basically rotate it uh, 360 degrees. We're going to start there. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Yeah, it just just did the job there. Looks really clean and nice. I believe it did run a little bit. I don't know whether that is a help or not. Looks like he's at 25. I tell you, these LED lights are just not very good for some things. I mean, it, they would let me see better, but they sure don't let you see better. Not at this point, not with the camera. Looks like did a real nice job in there, honing that, fitting that piston. Let me roll it up to the top. Nice, nice work. We've got our oil line coming up here. Got to pull that before we can pull the cylinder. It 
Eh, half a reed valve. Cool. That's pretty neat. Most of the fuel goes straight down into the case. It's just a little bit that comes... Well, it looks like all of it does. Uh, maybe a little bit. Let me see if I can get you where you can see. Okay. You can see right up here, um, right here, you can see the ring right there. And I think when the piston's at the very bottom, yeah, I can see those finger ports, they, they come up from there. But the majority of your fuel goes straight down. I don't know. So you can see the holes in the piston there. And then you see nothing but a big hole. And I don't, I just don't know how much of that you can see. Probably less if I get the light in there. How's that? Okay, and then when the piston comes down, you can see the holes in the piston there. And then when you're at the bottom, you can see the light coming up there. You don't think there's much that can come through there, but you've, they've evidently got finger ports there that are moving this, the flow up. A lot of bikes use that. But this is, uh, I think, the smallest one I've ever seen that did. I bet that thing really runs good. These GTs I always heard run really good. Okay, let's try to get the cylinder off. Feels loose. Let's see if we can get it up without tearing the gasket. Looks like it's all free. I'd like for it to just stay down there until I get this out. Okay. Let's see if I can go ahead and get that off now. Okay, let me get set up here, we'll get the piston off. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to get my Puller. I've got two commercially made piston pin pullers and two of them won't fit in there. See this one here, that's the smallest fixture on the end there. And this one here only has two and it's not big, or it's too big. So I've got to revert back to my homemade one that looks like it will do it. And I think that I made this when I was working on Hodakas. And that was probably, ooh, mid-70s. Let me see if this is going to work. So far, so good. So I've got a slot in this end that I need to use to keep it from turning.
It's moving pretty easy now. Hoping my tube's going to be long enough to pull the bearing through. There we go. Just perfect. Looks like you put a brand new pin in it too. Nice work. Do it, do it right. That's the thing. Okay, I don't really... There's some here, not a lot. Most of it's right there in the bearing. And like I say, it, this, this bearing on the other side might not be uh, as bad, but you're going to replace them both anyway. Kind of now, let me get my mic down there now. Pretty shot Okay, let's take a look at this cylinder. If it's run, it ran very little. Nice work. Nice cross hatch in there. Yeah, you know, when you look in the intake port here, it just doesn't look like there's much going in the upward direction into the ports until you look at it from in here. Those finger ports are just throwing, throwing fuel right up there. But in reality, most of it's going right down here into the crankcase. That's where most of it goes anyway. And then it comes through your transfers on the side as the piston comes up. Nice work on that. Okay guys, I think uh, that's as far as we can get in this video. So the next time you see this engine, we'll be taking the rest of it apart. But that's a good start. And it's, it really is a, a remarkably well-kept bike, even though we've got a little issue here. Uh, we'd rather not have something like that, but, you know, he bought it that way. And it, I'm sure he was very disappointed when he found out that it was a lot more than just a top end. He did a really great job do, taking care of the top end. Uh, so that's uh, all. Everything's great there, it looks like. We'll, we'll just uh, look at it, do some measurements as we go together, but I'm sure everything's fine there. And uh, we'll go ahead and try to get this torn down next time, and we'll go over 
the damage and see what all we're going to need to put it back together. Uh, he brought me a lot of parts, so might not need much. So we'll just we'll see what we got and uh, uh, kind of make that determination then. So hey, uh, you guys, uh, I've been having some trouble with my email. So if you've sent me email uh, lately, probably within the last three weeks or so, and I haven't replied to you, uh, send it to, there's another email on my about page in YouTube. It's a Gmail account. Let me just uh, jot that down for you. User Dakota at gmail.com. So if you have sent me something in the past few weeks and you haven't got a reply, that's why. Uh, I, I'm real, I'm kind of slow about getting to all that stuff. I, I get, you know, two, three hundred emails a week and uh, I've, whatever comments or a, after my videos, I try to reply to all of them, but it takes me a while to get around to it. So it's almost, I, I've got to dedicate uh, about two hours after each video to go back and uh, answer the questions or comments and go through the emails and answer those. So it, it takes a little bit of time and it's sometimes it's kind of slow going. So uh, just, uh, you know, uh, just take it for what it's worth. Uh, be patient with me on that. So anyhow, uh, if you would, subscribe and thumbs up. And hey, thanks for going along on the ride. See you next video.